it's Lisa. We're going to be continuing along today with our summer theme of using up some things that may have accumulated in the class in the scrap room, uh, like uh, some thickers. I'm going to do a little bit with those. Uh, I'm going to be concentrating today though on using some stencils and something that has accumulated in my craft room, which is reinkers. Um, I use my reinkers quite a bit. But the ones I haven't been using very much are the craft ones. These are a pigment ink from Stamping Up. Now the technique I'm going to do, you could use any kind of reinker that you wanted, and you could also use ink pads or watercolors or distress paints. There's lots of things you could do, but I wanted to show you how to do this with reinkers in case you had some that you hadn't been using. And again, you can use um, like distress ink ones. It does, it does, they don't have to be craft ones. I have these turned upside down because you can see how they separate and turning them upside down helps. Uh, it's fixed these two because I like, well, it fixed one of them. I left them overnight and uh, we'll still get lots of pretty ink out of those. I'm going to be working with some metallic craft paint um, sold in either size. My, my little one was about out, so I just bought a large one because I use it so much. And this is the pretty background or a sample of it that we're going to be creating for this heritage photo. This is my the only picture of my parents on their wedding day over 50 years ago, almost over 55 years ago now. So um, I want to do a page about that. We're also going to be putting on the page these lovely leaves. These were created um, in the video that I did for newsletter subscribers. If you're not already a subscriber, you can subscribe over on my blog. And I will be resending, uh, this is the August 2014 newsletter, I will be resending it again at the end of August. So um, if you haven't already had access to that video, you can get it there. And it does more with the inks and stencils and things as well. But we're going to do the background here and then assemble uh, the page. I'm starting with some uh, white cardstock. This happens to be Recollections brand, their 80 pound uh, cardstock, which is really, really nice. It's a very smooth uh, texture. Um, smooth can make a really pretty texture. Um, you can also use the, the textured backgrounds and your inks and things will soak into those and create some lovely texture. It's just kind of whatever you like or what you have on hand. And this is what I had the most of, so I thought I would use uh, this particular one today. Now I'm going to start out using my stencil. This is from Prima and uh, this stencil, I mail ordered it, but you can, I saw it at Hobby Lobby uh, just the other day, so I know you, you can still get these. It's their damask, damask stencil and it's really beautiful. When I was planning this layout, I was planning to put the damask design in three different places. That's what I'm going to do today. But when I got everything out last night and got prepared to, to film, I realized that I could do this all over the page. This is one of those stencils that connects. In other words, I could could do my design or put my paint over it here, and then after it dried, I could move the stencil over and do this part and so forth and cover an entire background with this pretty damask pattern. I have done that with this stencil doing a border, and I'll link you to that video. Um, it was a Biltmore House page where I did a border going across, and I think I used modeling paste uh, with the stencil, and it creates a really pretty border. Um, I decided, though, that I'm going to stick to my original plan. I'm not going to put it all over the background. I want it to be a little more casual look, and I don't want this design to overwhelm things because I have the leaves and other stuff going on here. So I'm just going to start up in here somewhere with my design. About there. Looks good. I want it to be reasonably straight, but otherwise I don't really care. And it's very helpful with stencils to tape them down. So I just take some washi tape that maybe you got gobs of. Any, most any washi tape we have gobs of, don't we? Because it takes forever to use them up. But just uh, tape one of those down and you're you know, you want to be sure that it's a washi that's not going to peel back up. Or, in my case, I'm putting it where I'm likely to lay my photo anyway. Now, there's an old piece of vellum that I, or, that I happen to have laying around. It can be anything just to put your uh, metallic paint, craft paint on. Now, normally I would spread this with a brush. But I want it on there pretty thick. So I'm actually going to use a palette knife to spread mine. And given that I'm using a palette knife, you can just put it directly, you can sort of squirt it out there directly onto the um, stencil if you like. 
and I'm kind of being casual about this. I'm not trying to get just that one little design. It doesn't matter to me if it goes over into other parts of the stencil a little bit. I don't want it to create a very firm line over here on this edge, so I'll have to kind of be careful about that. But otherwise, and I am, as I say, putting it on there pretty thick. I want just a little bit more. I have to break out that new bottle. Okay. All right. Now, lift this up. And when I do the next part, I'll zoom in so you can see better what I'm doing. Now I'm coming down kind of catty corner to this and I do have to be careful that I don't get the top of the stencil into the other design. I would have to let this dry if I wanted to have these sort of overlapped, but I think for my purposes I don't need to do that. Now you could use other mediums for this. I just really like the white metallic paint because it's going to give me that great um, shimmer to it once everything is done. Again, kind of casually spreading this around, not trying to get very specific elements of the design. I don't even mind if I miss a spot here or there. And then I'm going to do the same thing on the lower right to form sort of a triangle of these designs. But I probably should put some paper under there <laughs> or I'm going to have paint all over everything. And this is where I just finally gave up and started putting paint right onto my um, stencil, which if you want it pretty thick, that's fine. Some mediums are real thin and some paints are really thin and if you do that they'll start to go under the stencil. But this craft paint usually is, is thick enough that you can uh, do that and especially if you want to have a thicker appearance to it. You can put it directly on your stencil on your paper. All right, so there it is. It's beautiful. Um, it's got to dry a little bit here and I'm going to be putting my photo in the middle of that triangle. All right, it's dried. I left it about an hour and a half um, to dry. I'm going to come in here now with my reinkers and I need some paper towel and a bottle of water. Again, you could use lots of other kinds of ink. But I'm just going to play with the reinkers. You could use watercolors for this. Lots of things. Now I'm going to do kind of one section at a time. So I'm doing that top section. I just put the ink down, just a couple of drops is all I needed, sprayed some water, and then pressed my paper to it. And I like the fact that it's sort of creating some drips and some almost cloud-like looks for this. I want a real soft background here as a contrast to those bright leaves. And doing the bottom, and I've added a little bit of the green down in the bottom as well. And I just keep repeating this, and it takes very little ink. When you use an ink pad, you know you have to keep you know, pressing that ink pad down and then adding the water. When you're doing straight ink, a couple of drops and some water and you've got a lot of color. And I felt like I needed just a touch more blue. The paintbrush helps spread it out. And I did try painting a little bit on there. That's another option if you don't like the pressing and you want to control where it goes. But for my look, it wasn't giving me the effect that I wanted, that cloud kind of effect uh, that I was going for. So I liked it better when I pressed the paper to it. And I think one more time here with these different colors, we'll get um, enough color onto my paper. Now this will warp the paper some when it dries, but that's okay. We're going to deal with that later on. Love the splatters and the drips. And I think the photo is going to look really pretty. This is really beautiful in person. I think it came out prettier in person than it was on the video. It's interesting. Some things show up better on video. Some things show up better in person. This is one of those. It's just gorgeous in, in person. 
All right, now once I dried it, I used a paper towel just to wipe over the paint because the paint is resisting that ink, and it did a really pretty good job of resisting it. I didn't have too much to wipe off there. All right, I have some trims. These came from Hobby Lobby in the fabric department. And I'm just going to start playing with the arrangement of the leaves. And again, the leaf video is part of my newsletter, so just subscribe to the newsletter to uh, have access to that. I'll resend the August newsletter um, at the end of this month so that uh, anybody who wants that can, can get that uh, video. I'm also using some thickers. We've been on a thickers kick lately trying to use them up. And this set has still has some quite a bit few vowels in it. But what I was going for, though, was to show you how to use all consonants. If you run out of vowels, there are a few things you can make with all consonants. And Mr. and Mrs. is one of them, except I didn't have enough R's. R's are something I always run out of. So I took one thick, the R thicker that I did have and put it over the back of, an, of a U, traced out my design, and then trimmed it. Uh, out. I'm going to have to switch scissors to my craft and rubber scissors. Uh, those Tim Holtz scissors would work well for this too. You need something that will cut through chipboard. And now I have two pretty good looking R's there. Okay. And I have a few more stickers. These are from uh, October afternoon. I have a a set that I'm about out of and I want to make sure they matched and they do um, but it's going to say becoming Mr. and Mrs. So we've used some stencils here. I do have a class coming up in September, a new class on using stencils and we do all kinds of techniques with lots of different mediums. You don't have to do all the artsy kinds of things. We're going to do pages that are just regular scrapbooking where you have a lot of photos on them um, as well as some of these more artistic pages. Now the background I'm doing I decided to put some of this on a, a background so that I could um, kind of deal with the warping. So I am trimmed down my white, I trimmed 3 eighths of an inch off the left side and the top, and then I just sewed it to some designer paper. And I sewed on my trim, which ended up slightly crooked, because the phone rang <laughs> halfway through, and also the fact that I didn't really pre-glue it. It's easy to... You, you, when you sew on a layout, you need to embrace imperfection because it's hard to sew everything perfectly straight. Um, I find, unless I've you know really kind of marked and, and planned things, even though I've sewn a lot uh, in my life, it, it, I still find that difficult. The other thing, you know, when you're sewing fabric, you can rip something out and redo it. With paper, you can't do that because you got holes in it. So it's probably better to go for a more of a, a crooked look or a, a, when you're working with these things. Just laying the leaves around, and I'm going to glue those on with the large glue dots. And then I'll be putting the full date on here when I've uh, finalized it. But I just decided to do the date in red to kind of bring some of that red down in the lower uh, right-hand corner there as well. Okay, so let's take a look at the final page and some close-ups. We've got some wonderful texture there on the um, paint with the ink colors behind it. See the leaves a little bit better and a little bit more of that design down at the bottom. So take a look at my uh, blog to get access to the leaf video and also keep an eye out for the new stencil class that will be coming out in September. We do tons of techniques with lots of different kinds of pages, um, and lots of different kinds of mediums, so you can really use a lot of the things that you already have. So thanks so much for watching. I appreciate your comments and your thumbs up. Um, it's very motivating.